I think we. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, this seminar is titled Interface Share Transfer with GFRP Reinforcement Push-Off Test. It is given by uh, Camilo Vega. Thank you very much, Camilo, uh, the PhD student in Student Architectural Engineering at the University of Miami. He obtained his Bachelor in Civil Engineering and his Master's Degree in Civil Engineering from the University Escuela Colombiana de Ingeniería uh, Julio Gravito, Garavito in Colombia. His current research is focused on material characterization of uh, various FRP systems and applications in RC, pre-stressed concrete, and masonry structures. Thank you very much for doing this, and the floor is all yours. Hey, thank you, Professor Pernoy, for having me in the seminar. Uh, good morning to everyone. And as Professor Pernoy mentioned, uh, the title of my presentation uh, is interface shear transfer with GFRP reinforcement push of test. So this is the content of the of the presentation. First of all, I will make a brief description of the NCHRP project uh, number 12121. And then I'm going to talk about the shear friction and we are going to, to see some uh, concept, easy concepts uh, related to the interface shear design models, the existing interface shear transfer design guidelines, and also a small comparison and evaluation of the interface shear transfer. And in the last part of the of the presentation, I will focus uh, yeah, my presentation uh, on the push of test. So we are going to see the dimensions, the reinforcement of the specimen, the test setup, uh, some results analysis, and finally, uh, some conclusions. Okay, so let's get let's get started uh, with the brief description of the of the project. The NCHRP project uh, number 12121 is a, is a project who is funded by the National Cooperative Highway Research Program. Uh, in fact, the, the general title of the of the project is Guidelines for the Design of Pre-Stressed Concrete Bridge Girders Using FRP Auxiliary Reinforcement. And also the research team of the project is composed for different universities and consultants. So in the case of this project, it is composed or are composed for the University of Houston, University of Miami, the Louisiana State University, and also for Castrodale engineering consultants. So the, the general or, or the overall objective of this research of this research uh, are two basically uh, what we want we want to propose modification to the ashto uh, FRP guide the specification uh, for the design of pre-stress concrete girders using FRP auxiliary reinforcement. And also we want to develop guidelines uh, for the design of pre-stress concrete girders using FRP auxiliary reinforcement, uh, including design examples and training materials to demonstrate to demonstrate the, the applications that we want to propose in the first objective. So uh, these are the, the current ASHTO design and construction specification. So, uh, Let's talk about uh, the backgrounds uh, and the reasons why we are carrying out uh, this project. Basically, FRP reinforcement is, is becoming more widely used in concrete structure, mainly due to its corrosion-free characteristics, prolonging the service life of structures and reducing the maintenance costs. Also using uh, non-corrosive materials for shear and auxiliary reinforcement is important because as we know, they are the closest to the concrete surface of members and so are often the first to experience corrosion. Um, most of the FRP research has focused or has been focused on reinforced concrete flexural member. Uh, for that reason, experimental and analytical data on pre-stressed concrete girders with FRP, shear, and auxiliary reinforcement are lacking. And, and finally, uh, the design specifications and guidelines uh, do not provide recommendation or, or guidance for, for FRP auxiliary reinforcement in pre-stressed concrete girders. So um, for example, I want to show you this picture. And because the term auxiliary reinforcement is extensive and, and varied, 
And for example, in this picture uh, shows a possible configuration of the auxiliary reinforcement that can be used in a typical pre-stress concrete bridge girder. And as we can see, the amount of reinforcement that must be provided to achieve a truly corrosion-free structure is relevant. And it, in that sense, the term auxiliary include, includes reinforcement that serves a wide range of purposes. And one of them, and which is on which corresponds to, to our objective in this project, is the reinforcement that connect the girder to the deck in, in a bridge. So we are going to focus in this type of reinforcement. Okay, so we'll going into more detail, in the case of the bridge constructions, the composite action between a precast, pre-stress girder, pre-stress concrete girder, and the reinforced concrete deck is typically of critical importance. Uh, so because when the pre-stress girder is made, for example, with carbon FRP tendons and glass FRP auxiliary reinforcement, the possible contribution of the GFRP to the resistant mechanisms should be investigated. And if demonstrated, should be accounted for in the design. So for that reason, uh, in this topic, we are going to focus in this reinforcement. Okay, having said that, um, we need to go to the theory of the shear friction, but it's a, it's a basic concept. It's, it's not be a difficult concept. Uh, basically, the interface shear transfer is considered across the following conditions when we have a plane formed by an existing or potential crack also when we have an interface between different materials when we have a, an interface between two concretes cast at different times and finally when we have a interface between different elements of the cross sections so the shear mechanisms that occurs in these situations is known uh, as are known as is known as interface shear transfer or simply uh, shear friction. Well, there are some parameters affecting the interface shear capacity. So the first one is the surface roughness. It's the first parameter that can affect the capacity of the of the of the interface. Uh, the concrete the strength, also the cohesion or the aggregate interlock. The concrete type, if we talk about normal weight concrete or, or lightweight concrete, the amount of reinforcement or the ratio of reinforcement crossing the, the interface at the clamping force developed in the reinforcement. And finally, if we have an external perpendicular force uh, to the interface, first that force can affect the capacity of the, of the interface. So now I want to take about the, the design models of the shear friction. So actually there are, there are two main models, two main models. The, the shear friction model is the simplest design model. This model uh, ignores the cohesion component and assume that the shear transfer is only due to the friction resulting from the clamping force across the interface. So in this case, the, the slip or, or the relative displacement in the transfer reinforcement uh, develops tension and provide the clamping force across the interface. And the second one, the cohesion plus friction models, um, is a model uh, who consider the contributions of, of the cohesive bond between the concrete surface and in this case, the resistance is due to the cohesion, the aggregate interlock, and the shear friction uh, by the force in the in the reinforcement. So from this from these models, from these two models that we saw in the previous slide uh, slides, uh, the design codes specify guidelines for determining uh, the shear interface strength. So to mention a few of them, the first one, the Ashto LRFD BDS bridge design specification. For example, the nominal shear resistance is given by this equation. It's a simply equation, no, no, no difficult. Uh, this, uh, uh, this code or this, this, uh, this um, equation is based on the second model that we saw in the previous slide. So it's, it's based on the shear friction mod plus cohesion model. 
And for this specification applies to steel reinforcement. Uh, I don't want to go into the individual meaning of the each variable, but into the overall meaning of the variable that make up the equation. For, for example, as we can see, the first part of the equation is given by the cohesion component. The second part is given by the, the shear friction as such due to the reinforcement. And finally, the third part of the equation is the compressive or, or the permanent net compressive force perpendicular to the shear plane. Another code is the ACI 218. Uh, this code is based in the first model in the fridge friction in the shear on the shear friction model. Uh, for that reason, you can see that the equation is simpler than the, than the previous one uh, that we saw in the in the Ashto. Just consider the contribution of the reinforcement. So the the, the clamping force is provided by the reinforcement in, in that equation. When this equation we don't have a cohesion component. So it's a, it's a simpler equation. Uh, for the AC318 applies also to a steel reinforcement. The second equation, the equation is, is almost the same. I mean, it's, it's the same principle. You just have the, the geometrical component of the angle if the reinforcement is inclined. Uh, another code is the Canadian standard uh, the equation. This code also is based on shear friction plus cohesion model. So you can see that the equation is similar to the one seen previously in the Ashto code with a slight difference in the way the variables are presented, but at the end or in the end, it considers the same parameters, cohesion, the compressive uh, stress and the shear friction. And finally, to mention uh, one code with GFRP, and this case is the Ashto LR of the BDS for GFRP, the second edition. So the nominal shield resistance is given for this equation very similar to the one that we saw uh, in the in the Ashto for steel, and it's basically because in this case this equation applies to GFRP reinforcement, but using Ashto BDS as a reference. Okay, so if you can see, the only difference in this equation is uh, the mechanical property of the material because for the steel we have Fy. But in this case, we have FFD, which is the tensile strength of the GFRP. Okay, so in order to study the shear or the mechan the transfer mechanism mechanisms, uh, different type of types of test specimen have been used. Being the push of a specimen, the most common. This is the shape or, or, or the configuration of the push of a specimen. And since the 60s, uh, this method has been effectively used by several researchers uh, to determine the interface shear transfer, uh, for example, of plain concrete, fiber reinforced concrete, or conventional concrete. And basically, uh, you, you can see in this picture that the test consists of applying a compressive load, a compressive load uh, to the top of the specimen which has this special shape. And the shape is because we want to generate a relative displacement between the two L's or the two blocks that form the specimen. And this displacement occur due to the gaps that we need to create in the fabrication process of the specimen. So the load initially is applied in an axial way and is transferred as a shear load across the, the plane joining the two blocks. Also, the push of a specimen are tested either as an uncrack or pre-crack specimens along the, the shear plane. Okay, in order to evaluate the efficiency of the model, uh, these graphs are, relate, are related ju just to the GFRP reinforcement. So this graph uh, show the results obtained in different push-off tests with GFRP reinforcement, and it compares the failure loads obtained experimentally versus the estimate resistance given in this case by the ASHTO GFRP code. And as we can see, for example, the graph on the left side, this graph, there is a trend of the data to the estimate resistance. So in this case, to the y-axis. And the point is that is the the point in this case is 
that that behavior represent an unconservative condition. In fact, if you see the 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 picture to the on the right on the right side shows shows that for all values the ratio the ratio between the estimate uh, resistance and the failure load obtained experimentally is greater than one. You can see, or it's larger than one, which means that in this case the code is overestimating the capacity with values higher than those obtained experimentally. Okay, so uh, moving uh, to the to the third part of the presentation with this background. We performed a campaign to validate the contribution of the GFRP to the mechanism of shear transfer by using the specimen shown in, the, in this slide. So all the specimens have the same dimensions, had the same dimension, 32 inches height, 16 inches wide, and 8 inches thick. The shear plane, this part of the specimen, uh, is 13 inches by 6.5 uh, inches. And this value, the value of, of 6.5 is because if you can see in the section one, we want to, to generate or we include a notch in both, in both sides of, of the specimens. And the purpose for this notch is to define the location of the crack formation along the intended vertical shear plane. So for that reason, in the calculation, we we use this value and not the eight uh, thick of the specimen. So all the specimen were fabricated uh, using a single concrete compressive strength of 5,500 psi to, to represent the, the typical strength of bridge decks. So this slide uh, shows the, the three groups of the specimen that were built without reinforcement, with the steel reinforcement, and with GFRP reinforcement. So the picture on the left depicts uh, the details for the additional steel reinforcement provided in the L part, in the L parts of the specimen to prevent the premature failure by, for example, bending and splitting in the concrete. And also this picture represents the specimen without or with no reinforcement crossing the shear planes. As you can see, there is no steel ropes crossing the shear plane. And the other two, the other two pictures uh, represents the specimen with reinforcement crossing through the shear plane. So the one on the the one in the center with the steel steel ropes, and the one on the right with GFRP steel ropes. So for the case of steel steel ropes, we provide two steel stirrups, and for GFRP, we provide three steel stirrups. Okay, so comments about, uh, about or related to the selection of, of the amount of stirrups. And basically, the, the amount of reinforcement uh, was based on the objective of obtaining similar strength. So uh, uh, as we saw in the previous slide, the prediction model of the Ashto GFRP overestimate the, the result of obtained experimentally more or less by a factor of two. So that uh, gives us as a result that the specimen with the steel reinforcement used two steel stirrups number four, double leg each, and the specimen with GFRP reinforcement uh, used three GFRP stirrups number four, uh, double legs also each uh, to calculate the interface shear, shear transfer for a specimen with the steel reinforcement uh, we use the provision of the ashto bds and also we use as a reference the provision of the aca 318 and for the specimen with gfrp reinforcement the provision of the ashto for gfrp reinforced concrete were used Okay, this is this picture uh, represent or depicts the test setup of the of the, of the specimens. So a total of nine specimens have been tested. Only actual compression load was applied at the center of all specimens through a five inches by nine inches long steel plate. So the push off uh, testing was was performed using an universal test frame. Uh, the deformation of the specimen was measured using three uh, different type of displacement device. 
uh, we use LVDTs in vertical position in order to measure the relative displacement of the slip be be between the two L's or the two blocks of the specimens. We also use potentiometers in horizontal position uh, in order to to see the the crack width in the correspond and the corresponding lateral se separation of the two L parts of the specimens. And finally, we use a strain gauge uh, to measure the strain in the internal reinforcement, so in the steel ropes that cross in the shear plane and on the external concrete surface. So this table shows a, a summary of the test results of the push-off specimen performed. So the first three specimens correspond to the specimen without reinforcement. The second part, the specimen with the steel steel ropes, and the last three specimens correspond to the specimens with GFRP steel ropes. So the VU value corresponds to the maximum load uh, reached during the the test long to, during the test, along with the with their corresponding value of the vertical displacement, the horizontal displacement, and the strain measure in the reinforcement and in the on the concrete surface so the reason uh, why there are two columns for the strain in the reinforcement is because we want to to measure the strain uh, in two different location of the reinforcement in order to see if the level of, of if the stress level in the stirrups was the same or not so for that reason we have two columns in the in the in the strain gauge for the for the reinforcement and for for the concrete uh, only the highest values was reported in in this in this table but let me show you this information in a better way and this way is through is through a graph so this chart depicts the the relationship between the load and the vertical and the vertical displacement or the slip obtaining each of the nine specimen tested so the three curves uh, at the top, these three curves at the top, uh, represents the specimen with the steel stirrups. The tree in the middle, these three curves, represent the specimens with GFRP stirrups. Uh, and the tree at the bottom, this one, this one, and this one, that which are almost not seen, uh, represent the specimen without reinforcement. Okay. So and as we can see, a first conclusion that we can state is that the contribution of the steel reinforcement, in this case, to the interface shear strength is greater or, or, or is, is larger than the contribution provided by the GFRP reinforcement, even when the amount of GFRP reinforcement is 50% more. Because remember, for those specimens, we have three stirrups number four compared to the two stirrups number four. Uh, for the steel. Also, uh, the chart shows that once the maximum load is reached, the reinforced specimen, either steel or GFRP, have a drop in capacity. You can see that we have a drop in the capacity, but then it stabilized at the constant load, at the constant val value of load, sustaining such load and increasing the rate of the formation, but the point or the, the important point to note is that the GFRP reinforced specimens, these three curves, uh, have almost the same plateau as the steel reinforcement specimens. So that means, for example, that if we want a similar perform performance between steel and GFRP reinforced specimen, not in terms of, of ultimate strength, but in capacity after peak, uh, the ratio between the area of steel to GFRP reinforcement should be approximately two third, according with the amount of reinforcement that we use for, for this test. Another point to, to, highlight, to, to highlight is that once the GFRP reinforced specimen reach the concrete first crack at a load uh, similar to the unreinforced specimens, the slope of the graph continues increase until it reached a peak. So that means that the GFRP reinforcement is thus providing clamping 
restrained prior to the shear failure. And this characteristic can be observed, for example, in the specimen F35, which is this curve, the green line. For example, in this part, when the, the, the test reach a, a load of around 200 kilonewtons, we have a, a flattening, flattening or, or a, a, slope of, a slope of almost zero of the load slip curve, but then continues to increase a peak of around 80 kips or 350 kilonewtons, okay? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to pass this slide because uh, it, it, it shows what I already mentioned in the previous slide in the analysis of the data. So these tables, now I want to show you a comparison between the specification and experimental results. So it can be seen, it can be, can be observed that the experimental result of the GFRP, those that are resulted in this red square, the experimental result for GFRP reinforced specimen are clearly well below the estimate given by the ASHTO GFRP guide specification. So in this case, you can see that the average ultimate load obtained obtaining this in the experiment was around or was about 72 kips, while the code estimate 116 kips. So this is only about 60% of the estimate value confirming the overestimation of the code. Even, even for the for the steel reinforced specimen, there is a, a small overestimation of the of the code obtaining, for example, a experimental load of 94 kips versus an estimate load of 100 kip uh, in the code. And opposite to this behavior, for example, the, the ACI trading code in the in this code or in this value, there is a clear underestimation of the capacity with a, with a theoretical value of 67 versus the experimental value of 94 keeps obtained. But for the later, for the ACI 18 this outcome is, is obvious because that goes, remember, follows the pure shear friction model and does not consider the contribution of the concrete in the shear transfer capacity. Okay, this video shows one of the tests it's in fast motion. Uh, this is a reinforced specimen with GFRP. And what I want you to see in this video is the relative displacement between the two L's or between the two blocks of the specimens. Uh, some points to, to, to take in account. This part of the frame or the upper part of the frame is fixed, okay? So that means that this L or this part, the upper part of the specimen is not going to move, it's going to be fixed. And the lower part or the, the, the platform of the frame and the lower part of the specimen uh, is going to go upward, okay? Okay, I'm going to play it again and pay attention how the gap of the specimen is closing. Also, let me use the pointer to move faster in the video to see. That way you can see the relative displacement going back. Okay, so we are almost done. Let's talk about the failure modes. According to, to the results obtained in the test, the typical failure mode occurs at the shear interface, which is the connection between the two L's of the specimens. Uh, for the specimen without reinforcement crossing the shear plane, the failure was sudden and brittle as suspected. So this picture uh, shows the failure mode of the specimen without reinforcement. So as I mentioned, sudden and brittle. But however, for, for those with reinforcement, either a steel or GFRP, the contribution to the interface shear resistance and avoidance of sudden failure were significant. 
So for example, in the specimens with GFRP reinforcement, where a brittle failure was expected due to the linear elastic behavior of this material, the result was totally opposite as seen in the graph. Also the failure mode uh, of the specimen with GFRP steel ropes uh, was very similar to that of the specimen with the steel reinforcement, experiencing a post-peak low plateau without a sudden failure. So these two pictures show the, the failure, the typical failure mode of the specimen with reinforcement. Uh, on the left, the steel reinforcement, and on the right, the GFRP reinforcement. Okay, finally, uh, I want to talk about the stresses in, in the materials. So this table shows the stress level in the reinforcement at maximum load uh, to evaluate the, the module of elasticity of the concrete. A, a value of 5,300 PSI was considered according to the 28-day average result of the individual cylinders uh, tested in the lab. For steel, a typical value of 29,000 PSI was considered and for GFRP, a value of around 9,000 KSI, according to the results obtained in the mechanical characterization test. And basically the results show that the level of stress in the reinforcement, for example, for a, for a steel reinforcement, these three results, these three values, uh, the result is much lower than the FY. For example, in, in this case, this, this was the steel grade 60, so the FY is 60 KSI, so the stress level is much lower than that value. And same situation for the GFRP with a value of around uh, 12 KSI, much, much lower than the tensile strength of the, of the material, who is around, oh, it's about 100 KSI. And also for the related to the concrete, the maximum value of FC was about 3,000 PSI. This was the, the maximum value and also is well below of the 5,300 PSI that we have as a F prime C. Okay, to, to summarize some overall conclusion, uh, the GFRP reinforcement contributes significantly to the interface shear strength with ultimate strength values higher than the results from a specimen without reinforcement. Also, the GFRP reinforcement makes a significant contribution to the interface shear once the ultimate strength is reached, allowing the, the specimen to deform at a lower level, level of load and preventing the sudden failure. Um, the results for the GFRP reinforced specimens are clearly well below the estimate given by the by the code, by the ASHTO GFRP guide specification, confirming its overestimations. And as we saw in the, in the last slide, the tension and stress level in the reinforcement is far from the values used for, for tension design. Okay, finally, I want to, I would like to thank all those uh, who have supported this project, the NCHRP, who has funded the project, the Owen Cornish company who provide us the GFRP for PS syrups, and finally to the Structural Materials Laboratory team headed by Dr. Nani and Dr. De Caso and all their staff. Um, thank you very much. Thank you.